If these two candidates are so unpopular, why aren't the Libertarian Green Party candidates getting more traction? Why wouldn't this be the ideal moment for a third party challenge of some credibility? Um, I think you have a couple of things going on. The first is we do have two uniquely unpopular candidates, but we also are at a time of deep polarization, a polarization that we have not we've not hit this level, certainly in the last 40 or 50 years. So we are at a weird place in American history where more people identify as independents and say that they're not going to register with a party, but they're more identified with a party than ever. You pull on your blue jersey or your red jersey, and that is that is how you go. Um, the second thing is nobody really gets to know who Nobody knows who these other candidates are. They don't have the money or the infrastructure. And when you do see them on television, they aren't exactly giving you an easy reason to pull for them. Wesley. Of course. I mean, I think Amy was a really valuable point there, right? The idea, you also have to speak to the quality of the third party candidates, mm -hmm. right? It does raise a question of, couldn't this be a moment for a third party candidate? I think it's a very different conversation in a world in which Mitt Romney decides that he's had enough with Donald Trump and he puts his name in a ballot. I think it's a very different world in which a Condoleezza Rice decides, you know what, I'm not doing this, I'm getting into the race. It's it's hard when you have figures who are on the relative margins of the, a political discourse, and that's not to undermine Jill Stein of the Green Party or Gary Johnson of the Libertarian Party, but we're not talking about major major political figures who have stepped in to run.